Hi, I'm Tim Berglund with Confluent. When you're building things in the cloud, you want a good command line interface. I'd like to show you a few things you can do with the Confluent Cloud CLI. You wouldn't want to construct a whole cloud application without it. Confluent Cloud is a fully managed Kafka service. I'm going to run through everything the CLI can do with it and show you what's happening on the screen while I do. Let's get started with a login. Uh, quite sensibly, that's the first thing you have to do with the CLI. You log in with the same email and password you'd use to log into the web UI. Then you need to create what's called an environment. Examples of real life environments might be things like dev, test, staging, production. Uh, each environment contains its own set of clusters, all of which share a common schema management service local to the environment. Now that we've created the environment, we have to set it as the default. That way, subsequent commands will look only for clusters inside this environment, and we won't have to keep specifying it with each command we run. Now let's create a new cluster. A Confluent Cloud cluster is really a namespace for topics. You don't need to think about any of the usual things you'd have to if you were operating this cluster for yourself, like how many nodes to provision, or how to handle Zookeeper, or anything like that. You just give the cluster a name, and that's it. Now we'll specify this cluster as the default, just like we did with the environment. That way, subsequent commands will only apply to this cluster. Before we try to produce or consume messages, we'll need an API key. So far, we've been authenticating to Confluent Cloud using our login credentials, but actual Kafka operations require a key and a secret. Let's create one associated with the email address of our cloud account. And we'll need to tell the CLI that this new key we just created is the default we want to use going forward. This again keeps us from having to specify it in every subsequent command, which makes everybody happy. Now that things are pretty well set up, we can create a topic. I'm going to create a topic called Demo Topic 1. And remember, uh, naming things is hard. Uh, so I'm going to produce some messages to that topic now. And continuing my creative streak, I'm going to produce the first 10 positive integers as messages. Yes, we wrote that ourselves. Uh, now, I need to put my money where my mouth is, which means I should be able to consume those messages as well. And here they are. Next, let's check out some Confluent Cloud security features. I've got a Java application that I'd like to have produce and consume messages to our topic. But to make things a bit more realistic, I want to associate it with what's called a service account. We can associate various security privileges with the service account, and then let applications authenticate with the credentials of the service account. This is handy if you've got many applications that share the same set of privileges, which you probably do in the real world. Now that the service account exists, it will need a key in secret, just like we prepared earlier for CLI access. We're going to need a Confluent Cloud config file with all the relevant connection information. That's like the bootstrap servers, security configuration, the key, and secret. By default, this service account can't do anything. There are no ACLs configured at all. That's access control lists, as you can see here. So if we try to run that Java application I was just talking about, we'll see that it fails. Now I'll use the CLI to add ACL entries to the service account that will let it create topics and produce to those topics. And now we can run the producer example Java application, and it works this time. Now let me delete those ACL entries so the service account can no longer create or write to topics. We're going to replace them with a cool new kind of ACL that acts on a topic prefix. So let's create a new topic, this time called Demo Topic 2. Yes, our team in the writer's room really is one of the best. And now we'll create ACLs to allow create and write operations on any topic that starts with Demo Topic, regardless of the characters following in the name. Now when we run our Java application again, it works. Remember, it's the same service account as before. So those new ACLs apply, even though we haven't done anything at all to the application's security config. Next, we'll blow away those ACLs so we can start something new. I always want to make sure you know I don't have anything up my sleeve, so we'll just start clean. Well, uh, we've got a data generator that creates simulated page views, and that data generator is actually a Kafka Connect connector. So let's create some ACLs for Connect. And because this destination topic is in Confluent Cloud, let's set up the environment variables Connect needs to know where the cluster is and how to establish a secure connection to it. Now, we'll start up a Dockerized Connect cluster locally with the Kafka Connect Data Gen connector installed in it. 
That container starts up with the data gen connector jar already in it, but we still need to post a little bit of config to the connect rest endpoint to create the connector. This tells it what topic to produce to, how much data to generate, and configures it, as you see, to use JSON serialization. And we'll just use the rest endpoint to verify that the connector is running, and it looks like it is. So great, we've got a local Dockerized data generator producing simulated clickstream data to our Confluent Cloud cluster. The next step is to run a consumer to process that data. But before we start it, we'll have to set up some ACLs for it so it can access the topic. Note again that we're using a wildcard here for the topic name. This is actually a highly privileged consumer able to read any topic at all. Now we'll run our Java consumer again, configured to run the data in the page views topic, and it works. And that completes our demo of the Confluent Cloud CLI. We logged in, created an environment, made API keys, made topics. We set security for several different clients, including a Java application, and connect. And now I'll tear all that down. Delete the ACLs, the service account, the topics, the keys, the cluster, the environment. Like they say, take only pictures, leave only footprints. Except in this case, I'm not even sure we left footprints. So if you build things with cloud, you probably want to use the Confluent Cloud CLI. And now you know how.